This video will cover everything you need to know to get lean and shredded. In this video, we'll cover calories, how many calories you need, and how to manipulate your calories to make sure that you're staying on track to reach your weight loss goals. Protein, how much protein you need. Carbohydrates, what should you do with your training? Should you increase, decrease, keep the same? Cardio, what type of cardio you should be doing? And how to track your weight loss and your progression in and out of the gym. So let's begin with diet. What should you do with your diet? First aspect is calories. You probably know that you need to be in a calorie or energy deficit. This is simply just burning more calories than you consume on a daily basis. It doesn't even have to be a daily basis. It just has to be over a sustained period of time. When you're in a calorie deficit, your body uses tissue on your body for energy because it doesn't have enough from fuel sources. This causes you to lose fat as the fat tissue is going to be used for energy. It can also use muscle tissue. However, we'll go over ways later on in the video to minimize this, to make sure you're minimizing the amount of muscle you're losing and maximizing the amount of fat that you're losing. Also important to mention that the body will always prefer to use fat for energy than muscle for energy, because it wants to preserve the muscle that it built, because it spent so much time and own resources to build up the muscle because it needed it, it would prefer just to use the fat for energy. So how many calories should you be eating? I recommend getting in, going on an online calculator. I'll link one in the description down below. Use this, put in all your details and then get the rough calorie estimate that this calorie counter gives you and go with that for a week or two. Make sure you're tracking your weight every day or at least every couple of days and see the trend that your weight is going. You want to aim for around 0.5 to 1.5% of your total body weight loss per week. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you want to be in the region of one pound to three pounds loss per week. If you find that with the calories that the calorie calculator gave you, you are not on track in between this range, then play around with your calories. You can take away or add 200 calories either side to make sure that you're staying in this range. You want to fill your diet up with as many single ingredient foods as will be more satiating as there is more volume if you choose the right foods of course. If you eat junk food it will be harder to stop eating as it is so addictive. This may cause you to overeat. Next area of diet is protein. You want to aim around one gram per pound of body weight of protein. When you're bulking you can get off with lower protein around 0.8 to 1 grams. However when you're cutting your body needs more energy you may want to eat 1 to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight of protein this will make sure that you're minimizing the amount of muscle tissue that you're losing carbs i recommend that you keep carbs high as you need carbs to train efficiently in your session this is because carbs are the body's main fuel source if you have low carbs your sessions may suffer which will lead to less progression and regression in some cases which will just reduce the amount of tissue you have it's not that you need carbs i just prefer to keep them in as it always helps your training more. Training. For your training, you want to keep the majority of everything the same. You want to try and keep progressing where you can, as you should still be progressing if you're recovering correctly. I have made a full guide on how to properly recover from your sessions in the gym. It covers everything from diet to sleep and even your stress levels. I've linked it in the description down below. When you're recovering properly, you'll be able to continue training in the same manner. This is because you want to keep tissue built during when you're bulking during your cut. You don't want to lose any tissue as that will just ruin the physique that is left at the end of the cut. I recommend keeping the majority of the volume the same. However, when you get lean, you may want to swap out for your exercises. Say squats are causing too much fatigue. You may want to swap it for a leg press or something similar like that. So the movement involves less stability with your core because you have less fat and weight around your core so it'll be harder to stabilize. So you may want to swap it out for a more stable more externally braced exercise such as a leg press. Cardio. If you want to do cardio to increase your total daily energy expender, choose a form that is not overly taxing so that it will not hinder your recovery. Some examples of low taxing cardio is treadmill walking on a slight incline. You could do cycling on a bike. These are all low fatigue exercises which will help to increase calories. At the start of your cut, you could do something as simple as between your sets in the gym, you go for little laps and walks around the gym while you're resting. This will help increase your calorie output for the day, which will increase the calorie deficit, which will help to lose more fat. Also, it will help to save time throughout the day if you don't have any extra time throughout your day to put aside a little bit of half an hour cardio here and there. Some cardio I would recommend you avoid, just high intensity, high fatigue cardio. 
such as running and high intensity interval training, as this will put a lot of demand to the central nervous system, which will reduce the amount of recovery that you're able to get, which will hinder performance in the training sessions as energy will be lower. So why would you not just do loads of cardio, low intensity cardio throughout your day, just so you can eat more calories? Well, there's an issue to this. There becomes a point which when you're doing cardio, your body will react and it will compensate for your calories that you're burning throughout the day, known as NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. When you're doing more cardio, because you're burning more energy, your body tries to preserve the energy from other portions of the day to stop you losing too much fat. It's a survival mechanism. So if you're doing two, three hours of cardio a day, your body, outside of your cardio sessions, your body will be burning less calories from just fidgeting and moving around because your body is trying to preserve energy. So it's a good idea to do cardio, however, there is a threshold that it's likely that your body will compensate it for somewhere else. This is different for everyone, so you could play around with it and see how your body reacts. Okay, final aspect of getting shredded is just tracking. Use a scale in the morning before consuming any calories and make sure you go after you go to the toilet so it's consistent. Use a scale and weigh yourself every day if possible. However, every couple of days will be good. Your body weight will fluctuate because of water weight going in and out due to different foods being eaten, different timings, more carbs, stuff like that. So just find the rough trend over time that like your body weight is traveling in. I recommend the app Happy Scale. I'll leave a link in the description. It just gives you a really good breakdown of your weight loss or weight gain that you're getting from your weigh-ins every morning. I'll show an example on screen right now of progression over time with my weight gain or bulk. As I said earlier, you want your weight gain to be in the region of 0.5 to around 1.5% loss per week, depending on how quick you want to lose the fat. You could also use visual metrics to track your weight loss. For example, taking photos every week to track how lean are you look. This is a good idea. However, you want to make sure the conditions are the same every time and the lighting is the same. I recommend doing it in the same place every morning before ingesting food or water to keep it consistent. Do this every week to get an average. It is important to mention that body parts that have more muscle will tend to look leaner quicker as the fat is spread out over a larger surface area. This is why more muscular people look leaner because the fat is spread out more. An example is if you have a really big chest, your chest will begin to look leaner quicker than if your abs are underdeveloped. So you may look like you're holding more body fat there in your abs when in reality it's roughly the same but it's just that it's spread out more. However, don't be discouraged if in one place you're not losing that much fat, your body will eventually have to use the fat source as it needs to pull energy from somewhere. How do you track your food? To track your food, you can use MyFitnessPal or any other app which tracks food. However, the main thing here is just be consistent with your tracking. I recommend around three to four meals a day. However, just cater it to however you prefer to eat your meals. It could be two, it could be three, it could be four, it could be five, it could be six, it could be whatever you enjoy eating. Make sure you spread your protein throughout the day as always, because of protein synthesis and stuff like that. Okay, so that's everything we're gonna cover. If you have any questions, just leave it down below as always, and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.